Hi, today I'm reviewing the Cetaphil Healthy Radiance Antioxidant C Serum. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if that's something you're into, like, subscribe, share the video, check out the links below, or check out my Patreon community. Okay, so I picked this one up, man, I want to say five months ago maybe, and it kind of just sat around for a while. And I'd look at the ingredients and then i kind of sit there some more. I'm like, I don't want to trade in my Geek and Gorgeous for this right now. And then finally, uh, before the award show, I finally, finally gave it a good test trial. And now I finally get to review it. So sometimes I buy stuff at the moment, kind of looks new or exciting. And then, and then I look at it when I get home, it's like, mm, it's not really as exciting as I thought it was going to be. And then I finally give it a try. And sometimes it ends up being a winner. I did that with the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Moist Cream with the title of Hyaluronic and I just let it sit there for a few months and then I finally looked at it and tried it. It was great. So you never know. Don't judge a book by its cover. Judge it by the actual ingredient list, not just if it is hyaluronic in the title. So, Okay, so they say this concentrated vitamin C antioxidant protection defends against dark spots and hyperpigmentation. The gentle bright complex is powered by 2% niacinamide and nourishing antioxidants to reduce the appearance of dark spots, brown spots, age spots, and hyperpigmentation, post acne marks to even skin tone for a brighter, more radiant complexion. And if there's anybody who is a good judge of this, it's me. I've got all kinds of hyperpigmentation, melasma, dark spots, all of it. It's what kind of got me into skincare or that and a couple other things, but it's mainly the melasma that got me into skincare and dark spots and brown spots and hyperpigmentation. So here we are several years into it. It's looking a lot better, but it's still there anyway. So, okay. On to uh, my first criteria, which is packaging. It's a plastic bottle with a needle nose dispenser tip. Uh, it does not come sealed FYI. I think it comes in a box. So there we go. Uh, nothing too exciting about that. Although I do wish they'd put like, the expiration date or manufacture date on here instead of just a simple batch code but anyway it's not ascorbic acid anyway so it's not that big of a deal um okay so in terms of that we're good in terms of uh denatured drying types of alcohol which is my second criteria um it does contain denatured alcohol it's probably in the very middle of the ingredient list so it's not going to be a huge, huge deal for most people. But when you start adding in potential irritants, uh, the potential of being irritated goes up. So it's just something else adding to the fire of maybe being irritated. In terms of fragrance, this is another spot where it's possible to be irritated, especially if you have sensitive skin types. So in terms of fragrance of this product, it has a vitamin C smell to it. You know what I mean? It smells... Uh, people describe it as like a hot dog wad or some people describe it as like a a, a, a a metal smell. It has that smell, but ironically, it also contains fragrance in the form of peppermint leaf extract. And if you Google peppermint leaf extract, uh, it's not as potent as peppermint oil, but peppermint leaf extract is also just fragrance. Um, then we also have ball mint extract, which I think is Melissa officinalis leaf extract. It's also called ball mint. Then we've got grapefruit peel extract, then we've got orange peel extract, and then we've got lemon peel extract. So there's a heck of a lot of fragrance ingredients. They don't really deliver to cover up that hot dog water smell. So I don't know what the heck they put them in there for. It's really kind of a bummer that they put it in there at all because it doesn't cover up the gross smell that people don't like about vitamin C, but it's just in there and potentially irritating. Uh, okay, in terms of the manufacturing location, uh, I believe this is manufactured in Dallas, Texas, where Galderma's U.S. headquarters is, uh, so no issues with that. In terms of ease of use, I would recommend giving it a good shake-up because it is very liquidy and it will pour out quickly, so don't, don't uh, be over caught. Be cautious dispensing it because it does come out quite fast. Uh, okay, so a little bit of it goes a long way. It's got a liquid texture to it. And that hot dog water smell is very apparent. 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 Uh, anyway, so after cleansing, apply an even layer to your face and neck. Uh, and then give it a second to fully absorb. 
I would recommend using this in your morning routine. Vitamin C is best used in your morning routine uh, where it can protect your skin from UV damage. It can also help your sunscreen work better and be more efficient and protect your skin from um, antioxidants and free radicals and things like that. I, you know what, it's interesting. Uh, you really need some protecting ingredients and I see a lot of products that say like they're protecting from pollution. And in Minnesota, we don't really have a lot of pollution, but being in El Salvador, sometimes they're on those diesel buses. Suddenly it makes sense why some products are for protecting against pollution because uh, probably a lot of people in the U.S., we don't even really notice it, but I'm sure in diesel buses that aren't treated and things like that, you notice the, the smog around them. And it goes with the bus. So once the bus leaves, so, so does the smog. So anyway, so it's got a nice texture. It absorbs quickly. It sets to a slightly tacky finish but it sets to a matte finish it doesn't look greasy or anything like that which is nice um, give it a second to absorb and then you can follow up with your moisturizer and then be sure to follow up with sunscreen as well so very easy to use absorbs quickly the tacky finish isn't as bad as some vitamin c serums so super easy to use no issues at all with that okay then i will talk about the beneficial ingredients in this one uh, and then the type of vitamin C, the one that this uses is sodium ascorbyl phosphate. It is a vitamin C derivative. It's not used in a lot of vitamin C serums. A lot of vitamin C serums just use ascorbic acid. But sodium ascorbyl phosphate, it's a salt derivative. It's uh, proven to be very stable, which is nice. And it's shown to be kind of a promising type of vitamin C, but there's still not a whole ton of studies on it. The nice thing is it's very good for acne prone skin types. It's been shown that it can help fight acne and uh, the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is stable and it's also water soluble and stable up to a pH of seven. So uh, anyway, so it's still kind of new. It may have the photoprotective properties that ascorbic acid has and it may or may not help with anti-aging collagen production. That's still kind of unknown and there's really not a whole ton of um, double blind studies done on it. There still needs to be more on all of these derivatives, in my opinion. But if you're sensitive to ascorbic acid, sodium ascorbyl phosphate might be a, a nice one to try. There's tons of other ones. Magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, uh, tetrahexyl desical ascorbate, ethyl ascorbic acid. There's tons of them. So try them out. But if you can tolerate ascorbic acid, in my opinion, that is the best form. And it's the most studied, it's the most proven, it is unstable, it's a pain, but it's still the best in my opinion from what I know in terms of research. Okay, next up we've got niacinamide, anti-acne, skin brightening, cell communicating ingredient. We've got next up, up for exciting ingredients is hydroxyacetophenone, antioxidant preservative combo. We've got sodium PCA, skin identical ingredient, moisturizing ingredient. We've got mallow flower extract, which is a soothing ingredient. We've got uh, primula virus flower, which is an antioxidant. We've got uh, alcamila flower, which is an astringent oil absorbing extract. We've got a flower called the Veronica flower, which is another astringent ingredient. We've got yarrow root extract, skin conditioning, and then ethritol, which is a humectant. I don't know how they can say this product in and of itself is great at uh, reducing dark spots and hyperpigmentation and melas or they didn't mention melasma, but post acne marks. In terms of brightening ingredients, they're really relying on niacinamide and maybe the sodium ascorbyl phosphate. That's, I mean, in terms of brightening ingredients, that's it. So if you have stubborn hyperpigmentation, melasma, post acne marks, I personally wouldn't recommend relying on this. There's go with the sorbic acid or the regimen lab level serum or something brightening that this just can't do it uh, unless maybe it's not very stubborn or very new maybe the niacinamide can treat that but overall i wasn't super impressed with the this ingredient list um yeah especially when they're claiming it's going to help with hyperpigmentation it's just none of these ingredients really are, can totally deliver on that so anyway Okay, in terms of animal testing, uh, Cetaphil is not cruelty-free, which is kind of a bummer because they're such a huge brand. Um, anyway, in terms of the performance, 
I personally didn't notice any additional brightening with this product. I noticed more brightening from other beneficial products or vitamin C products. Um, if you're looking for a vitamin C product from a popular brand, the CeraVe one I didn't have, I didn't totally love, but I believe it's formulated better and it uses actual ascorbic acid. So that might be worth trying instead. Or the Geek and Gorgeous Sea Glow, which uses actual ascorbic acid, I think is going to be a better pick. Just my preference. Um, anyway, the thing I did notice with this is with continual use, my skin will get kind of red at the end of the day. I'm not sure if that's from the peppermint or the alcohol. I don't know, but I did notice instead of helping with hyperpigmentation, my skin will get kind of red with using it. So anyway, I wasn't impressed with the performance of this. It's lacking in soothing ingredients. It's lacking in brightening ingredients, it's lacking in antioxidants. The one nice thing for acne prone skin, there's no ingredients of note and maybe sodium ascorbyl phosphate can help with uh, breakouts. Uh, in terms of the price, so this is a full size, one ounce, 30 milliliters and retails for $20. So it's not terribly expensive. So that's the good side. So maybe it's worth a try for some people. Um, then last but not least, in terms of the it factor, for what it promises, it promises to be sensitive skin friendly. It promises to be skin brightening and it promises to defend skin from free radicals. I don't believe it delivers on any of those, at least in, from my experience. I don't think it delivers on any of them. And in fact, I think this has a higher chance of irritating skin than it does to calm skin, especially with the fragrance ingredients in there. So, um... Anyway, so I'm not impressed, and I'm not impressed typically with soy, sodium ascorbyl phosphate as its own vitamin C ingredient. I will say if you're into trying the derivatives, uh, the Skin Lab Vitamin C Brightening Serum contains several derivatives. So if you're going to rely on the derivatives, get them all because maybe one of them will prove down the road to be worth it, and maybe the rest won't, or maybe none of them will be good. Who knows? Anyway, so... In my opinion, this product doesn't even begin to compare with a good vitamin C serum. So, very disappointed with it. And I do believe for the year 2023, I think this is the lowest score I've given a product all year. It got a 4 out of 10. Which would be like, I don't know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G? It would be like a G score. Instead of an F for fail, it's like a G for... I don't know. Go try again. Go get another one. <laughs> A G for Go Get Geek and Gorgeous Seed Glow. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I do believe it did the worst this year. Not impressed with it. I'm surprised they're still selling it, to be honest. And I kind of regret buying it to begin with because my skin didn't like it at all. Anyway, I'm interested in you from you guys because I'm sure there's somebody that found this work great for them. I'm sure there is. So if that's you, leave a comment and explain why. You know what? I'm sure... Maybe I just didn't work for me, but for somebody else, it does great. So leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thanks so much. Bye, guys.